Hey there, this is Anthony Mittivier from MagneticMemoryMethod.com back with another mini training about something I get asked about all the time and that is using a memory palace for foreign language learning and really fluency boost. So it's just part of language learning but you can use a memory palace for any language. There's no language that's resistant to the memory palace no matter what angle it is. It just, you know, I've been doing all kinds of stuff with Chinese, it doesn't matter what level of Chinese, what area of Chinese, it works. So if you're ready, hit that like button for me, subscribe to this channel if you're not already subscribed, and hit that little bell so you get notifications of new videos, new trainings like these, and let's rock and roll. Now the first thing that I want to really stress here is that there is very, very good reason for focusing on individual vocabulary words. And a lot of people say, no, you want to focus on phrases. You want to focus on phrases. You always want to focus on words in the context of phrases. Now, although that's very true, it's also very true that you also want to focus on individual pieces of vocabulary. And so what you can do with a memory palace is just bang down 10 words and then go back and add phrases to them later. And that you'll find, if you enjoy this method, is you're going to really have a great time by actually getting down some foundations, like individual words, and then adding phrases around them, as opposed to trying to have your mind wrap itself around a whole phrase first, and not even having a place to go and visit it. So a memory palace is huge for that. The other thing is, is that you want a home run every time, right? So imagine having a methodological approach that enables you to just take a bunch of vocabulary words that you've chosen for particular reasons because you've identified that you need to learn those words in order to experience a boost and then you just lay them out on a path you make sure that they are very very well established which doesn't take much time at all then you go and add phrases it's a home run but if you just try and memorize 10 phrases well, you're juggling a lot more than you necessarily need to at that stage, and you can build up. So when people criticize the t teaching that I do, oh, don't focus on individual vocabulary words, I get it. I understand why they're making that criticism, but they're dead wrong because you want to do both. You want individual vocabulary mastery and you want phrases but you want to think about yourself as a learner. And if you want to explore this method, there's a reason why that I suggest it. And it's very, very fast, sizzling hot fast. And uh, it's not as if it isn't uh, backed up by all kinds of really great language learning teachers out there who have certainly uh, uh, seen. So if you just like put in memory palace in my name, probably one of the biggest posts is going to show up on one of the biggest websites that uh, is all about language learning. So check it out that way as well so i mean the point is is that i want you to create a winning memory palace by the way i'm speaking about a guest post i wrote for benny lewis and uh it's a, a really nice rundown if you like to see it with lots of words and so forth and it will teach you how to create a winning memory palace and you know what i'll even stick the link for that down in the description below this video so the question is how do we create a winning memory palace well we've got to have a code and the code is use the magnetic memory method principles is very, very simple and burn them into your mind so that you actually have a means of having this strategy. So you're not just like shooting blind, but you actually have a method that you use. And look, I'll tell you, the magnetic memory method is called a method because it gives you a code, but that doesn't mean it's a system. You create your own systems out of the magnetic memory method. And that is something that is really, really important that you understand that because a lot of other people they'll tell you about memory systems and so forth but i'm teaching you how to make your own systems and that is maybe the longer path and the harder path some people will think but it's also the path that gets the biggest re results and rewards and i don't skirmish or you know try to trick people into thinking that they're somehow getting a system that they pop into their mind i'm teaching you how to make your own system and i think that that's the better thing to do overall and uh what it all comes down to, and this is what is the key difference maker for so many people, is that you're going to make images in your memory palace that you attach to words in a way that we'll talk about in a second. And when you do that, you want to make them intense. And a lot of people, they just don't focus on the intensity enough. And I get that because it took me a long time to figure out you really need to make them intense. And it came up with all kinds of ways to ensure that I make them intense enough. And that goes back to having a code. So it's like a pilot. You get in a plane 
and you have a checklist that you go through and then the plane arrives. Same thing with memory techniques. If you want them to work, you've got to pay attention to the code and you've got to follow it. And, you know, again, you're going to do it based on a method, but you're going to create your own systems. And so you might find that a need that I have in my code that I go through isn't yours. But making images intense, I think, is on all of our lists and everybody has to check that off. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a second. But really understand that, that if you're having problems with using memory techniques, this is probably two areas already where you're having trouble. You don't follow the core principles of memory palace creation and you're not making the images intense. And then the other thing is, is that a lot of people, they don't understand that when you are memorizing words, you want to create your images so that they bring back the sound and the meaning or the meaning and the sound of the word. One of those things will not get you the results that you're looking for. You want them both. So any word that you memorize, you create images that trigger both the sound and the meaning. Now that sounds like cognitive overwhelm and oh my goodness, how am I going to do all this stuff? I have to make a memory palace, I have to have all my images intense, and I have to make every image do the sound and the meaning. Well, believe me, this is not intense. This is not difficult. It's just strategy and practice, and you will get it very, very quickly if you just follow these principles. Now, the other thing here, and this is the code really, is a when you make a memory palace, you don't want dead ends. A lot of people, they just lead themselves into dark corners and they wonder why the memory palace isn't working for them. I'm not going to get into all of the um, psychotactics and so forth and reasons why that I suppose that this is. And it just, it's, I've worked with thousands of people over the years. I've had thousands and thousands of emails and hundreds and hundreds of personal co coaching clients and uh, just... I know this is not uh, somehow verified scientifically, but it, intuitively I have found that people who build memory palaces with dead ends, they get what I call memory palace claustrophobia and they get stuck. They're going to run out of space and that locks them down and it, it makes them unable, incapable of actually getting the results that they're looking for. And it really saddens me because if you just make your memory palace in a way that you lead yourself out instead of in, you're going to have much, much better results from the get-go. And that is very exciting. The other thing is is crossing your own path. People trip themselves. They make their memory palaces way too complex. Make it simple. Break it down to just the brain dead. This comes next. This comes next. This comes next. So instead of, you know, okay, so my bed and then the corner of my bed and the other corner of my bed and the other corner of my bed and then where I have that little stick of, underarm deodorant and then next to that on my desk there's uh, my mouse you know like people will try to cram every single part of their memory palace with magnetic stations that's advanced level stuff and you know what even at the advanced level it isn't always the wisest thing so if you're going through your memory palace and you're just like oh my goodness this is too much it probably is too much so make it simpler on yourself memory palaces are not meant to be giant complex mega structures they're meant to create an outcome which is rapid memorization of key vocabulary that you can later add phrases to if you wish if you need to and then you just do it again and again and again and again and the way to get that happening at a rapid pace is just to make it simple don't overcrowd them and simplicity is a virtue so just don't worry about how, 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 you know, how many stations you're putting in there and maximizing all the space. Go for absolute clarity in your memory palace. And so one thing that I like to do when I'm first using a memory palace, breaking it in, so to speak, is just use the corners. So that's four stations per, per room, let's say, in a memory palace. Right? And those stations are very, very magnetic. They are the most magnetic stations of all because those corners are absolutely fixed in reality. And there's no wiggle room. There's no forgetting, okay, was it my underarm or stick or was it the mouse that was on the left on my desk? You don't have that. It's just the corner and then uh, the other corner. And then you got four stations. If you want to do some kind of Von Cube thing in rooms, you can do that as well. Um, I, I like the Von Cube, but I also am not uh, a big user of it because I like to be able to, when I expand from four stations to more, like adding furniture elements and so forth, then I like to be 
flexible to to that and uh but the von cube has some some really interesting things so um do look it up if you don't know the von cube already because it's pretty interesting and you know the, the thing is about memory techniques is you get into this world just keep reading about it keep getting as deep as you can because there's so much to learn and so many little advantages that you come up with that uh will make this just a, an amazing adventure for you and get you better results so on the matter of intense images Here's the thing, is that a lot of people, they struggle to see big things in their minds. And, well, the first thing is, is you don't have to see it all. You can just do HDTV uh, as a concept. You don't have to see. And I've been arguing with people. They keep telling me that they have aphantasia. And they say, I can't see things in my mind. And uh, I say... Yeah, I, I, when I started, I didn't really see things in my mind either, and even to this day, it isn't all that profound. And I've been looking into aphantasia or aphantasia or however you want to say it a lot, and I've found all the evidence that I need that it's no excuse for not using memory techniques or not getting results from them. It just isn't a problem. Sorry, guys. It isn't. And uh, it, it, go and look up um, Penn from uh, Penn and Teller, his Sunday School podcast. Listen to the episode where he talks about aphantasia and basically he talks exactly in that episode about exactly how any single person can use memory techniques without having to see anything in their heads and when you listen to it you'll know what i'm talking about and if you've ever struggled with the idea that you can't use memory techniques because you can't see images in your head it'll be instantly solved because you'll understand exactly how that he's able to remember things and so I'm not going to get into it here. I want you to go listen to that. I want you to be a huge fan of Penn and Teller. So go and check it out. And by the way, if you happen to know him, I've been trying to get in touch with him so that I can get the permission to quote what he says there on the Magnetic Memory Method podcast. I don't want to just lift it without permission uh, because it's so, uh, you know, so common that, that uh, well, in any case, the, the point is, is that if you know him, let him know that someone's trying to help change the world with uh, getting the good news about memory techniques out there and that I was really deeply impacted by what he had to say. And I think that it's a great demonstration of how you can remember things without needing to see images in your head. So moving on, Big and Strange is a great thing here from Tim Ferriss because you don't have to see like this giant loaf of bread, but if you can just think about the concept of a giant loaf of bread, then you're there. You got all that you need. And if you can think of it in the corner of your bedroom and attach that to a word in a way that lets you recall the sound and the meaning of that word, well, you're golden. So just think big and strange at the same time and don't get caught up in whether you see it in your mind or not. Really, really just allow yourself to settle into the concept that you can do this. And these are very, very important rules here or code for you to follow and so the other thing in addition to big and strange is color just spend a second thinking about what color things are that you use in your memory palaces and then make them vibrant again it's not like you're seeing hd television in your head or you don't need to but just focus on the vibrancy there's a huge tradition in the memory literature about the light of things and casting light on them well you can just say that they have light and they're vibrant. Trust me, get into this, it actually helps. That doesn't necessarily make sense, but it just does. And I think it does because you are just getting different representation centers of your mind and your brain and all those things involved. And the more angles that you attach or you attack things from, then the more likely it is going to be memorable to you and stick out. So it's just a quick little hack. Just focus on the vibrancy. And then action and reaction is just a huge, huge, huge thing. Because if you have the images that you are talking about just act on things without a reaction, then it's less memorable. And so it's, it's just something to keep in mind. It's, it's, it's part of the goal. You don't have to do it every time, and I certainly don't do it every time. But it, it, it's a really helpful principle to keep in mind when something isn't sticking, is to think, do I have action? Do I have reaction for your memory palace language learning efforts and activities so here's the thing though you need a plan all of this all these little tips and tricks and hacks and so forth they're not really uh, all that useful if you're not on the road right you've actually got to be doing it so create memory palaces often just get in there do the work and you're going to love it and i've got 
you know, worksheets for you that just enable you to create memory palaces without thinking about it too much. You just need to fill them out. And I know that that can cause the brain to be like, oh my goodness, this is so much work. It really isn't when you just get into it. Start with one, then make another one, then another one, and make it second nature. It's so funny, April, she was going through my notebook <laughs> the other day, and she was like, you made a memory palace of my office? Because she saw, it says, April's office at the top. And I'm like, I make a memory palace of everything. Why? Well, it's a good memory exercise for one thing, and I haven't used it yet, but I know that at a certain point, I'm going to get to a, 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 a time where I'm going to be like, I need a memory palace, and I'm going to be prepared because I made one of her office. I drew it down. That's a huge memory, uh, magnetic memory method principle is to draw your memory palaces. Lock them down. Get them down. Have a, have a brain just filled with memory palaces ready to go, and do it often. It's going to pay off. And then, of course... Use the alphabet. So a lot of people, I think it's a little bit insane, but, you know, no one, Steve Jobs and all those guys, they didn't really worry about being sane in the things that they were trying to help people achieve. You get in there and use what you've got. So you've got a home, right? And you can make a memory palace out of it. It's just brain dead simple. You don't have to think about it. You have a bedroom. It has four corners. You can use those four corners to drop images, magnetize them in place, and then you can pick the words that you need to memorize, high priority words that are going to make a real difference in your fluency, right? They're going to boost your fluency if you have them in memory. And then you alphabetize them because the alphabet is itself a trigger for recall. If you know that all the words are A words, or if you know that you're going to have B words after you complete a certain sequence of A words, you're relieving the cognitive overwhelm of what comes next in the memory palace. And the more you do that, the more you're free to just go into recall, practicing your recall, and then adding those phrases if you want to add phrases, and then going and reusing the memory palace or going on to the next memory palace. I would recommend you go on to the next memory palace because it's much more interesting and it's better for your brain and you end up leaving those original memory palaces fallow for a long time so that they're much more suited for reuse. But you can get good at reuse. Everybody has their own process, their own way of doing things. And uh, some people are much better at reusing memory palaces than others. If you look up on magneticmemorymyth.com, the podcast, there's something called the ugly sister effect. So you could just pop that into... Oh, and you've got to check that one out because there's been some recent discussions on there. And this guy... Uh, named John Schwartz, he put so many amazing uh, additions to it. He shared uh, some of his hard-won mnemonic uh, wins. And, and, and if you go and you read that and you just spend some time thinking this through, you're going to see what an amazing benefit comes from just working this stuff out for yourself. It's amazing. It's, it's just, it's, it's incredible. And the alphabet is a tool that you have. It's, a, it's, it, it's like a natural memory hook that you've been running through your head since you were born. And just as a quick little exercise, if you don't know how to recite the alphabet backwards, I highly recommend that you figure that out. And uh, there, there's, there's a way to um, get my take on how to do it. But uh, alphabet backwards is, is just, a, just an amazing thing. We're not going to get into it now. It's a little bit difficult to explain, but if you haven't heard it recited, it sounds like this. Z-Y-X-W-B-U-T-S-R-Q-P-O-N-M-L-K-J-I-H-G-F-E-D-C-B-A. And uh, it takes like four minutes to figure that out, um, to do it for yourself, but it takes longer to explain. <laughs> In any case, it's a great little thing. It's a great little uh, mind jump. It's like putting little electric cables on your mind whenever you have brain fog. And if you do it, then you're just like, wow. Anyway, the alphabet is, an, is this wonderful system that's out in the world, and you can use it to guide your memory in so many ways to alleviate cognitive overwhelm. So anyway, all this leads to getting yourself recall rehearsal, and that is practicing, repeating what you've memorized until that it gets into long-term memory. There's a couple of guidelines around that. For instance, five times the first day, five times the next day, then maybe once a day for five days, if you're doing the other parts of good language learning, then you're going to have an amazing time because it's going to get into long-term memory very, very quickly. And, you know, you're using phrases, reading, writing, speaking, and listening, all that stuff. And that's the big five of language learning. So instead of saying, I don't remember again and again and again, make sure that you do remember. Practice memory all the time as part of your language learning. And then read. Read in the language that you're studying and write in the language that you're studying. And then 
Make sure that you speak. And yes, speak even if you don't know what it is you're trying to say. Get used to that feeling of, I need to speak, I need to speak, and then actually speaking. Even if nonsense comes out of your mouth. When I was learning Chinese, you have no idea. I'm still learning Chinese. You have no idea how much nonsense comes out of my mouth. But I do it. I do it consistently, and I proceed, and I get results. And it's just the way that it is. You need to speak if you want to get fluency. And no, you don't speak out of memory palaces. Although on occasion, I will look up at the ceiling and try to find a word that I'm looking for and decode it from a memory palace. But that's not the point of the memory palace. The point is, if we go back to this guy over here, is to recall, practice recall so it gets into long-term memory. It's very, very important. And then, of course, you want to listen to the language that you're learning every day. Listen all the time. Be a person who listens to the language, listen to podcasts. You know, even though I'm relatively fluent in German, I'm, I'm very, very good in German, but, you know, I'm not in Germany anymore, and so I have gone and subscribed to a ton of German YouTube channels. Click that little bell button so that I get an email when new ones come up from the channels that I like, and I put in the time to make sure that I'm continually listening to this language because I don't want to lose it, and I'm finding opportunities to speak it. So you never stop learning unless that you stop learning. And the big five are really important. And then, of course, you want to repeat all of this stuff. Put it on autoplay. Make yourself a habit chain so that you don't have to, you know, you don't have to remind yourself. It's just something that you do as part of your life. Very, very important. And you're going to benefit a great deal from putting this system on repeat. So, you know, let's just go through it again, the big five. So you want to have a remembering system or a pattern that you follow so that you're doing some kind of memory exercise related to your language learning every day. You want to read in the language. You want to write in the language. And you want to speak it. And you want to listen to it. And then you want to do all that stuff over and over and over again. Habit chaining. It's really, really important. I have a habit chain demonstration in a post that I have about Mandarin morning rituals that go along with that's part of the Magnetic Memory Method podcast. You can check it out. A lot of people have found it really useful. Now, here's my suggestion to you. If you're really interested in improving your memory, go to magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash go and get the Magnetic Memory Method Masterclass. It's a really, really good, powerful training that goes not just into language learning, but it goes into all aspects. And when you take the entire training, what you'll find is that all of this becomes second nature and you become a fan of your memory for life and you use it in very strategic ways. And again, you do it by understanding how your memory works and then creating your own systems based on these principles. And there are so many principles to learn. And so that's why there's lifetime access to the masterclass. So you can keep coming back again and again and again. And you know what? If it's not for you, you don't like the way I teach, you don't like the sound of my voice, I mean, I don't even know how you would have gotten this deep into this video if you didn't like what I'm saying and how I'm saying it. But just in case that it's not something for you, it's no problem. 365-day guarantee from the day that you join. This rarely takes place. There are really no problems with the Magnetic Memory Method Masterclass for people who really take action with the techniques and make it part of their life and do the things that we're talking about in this video. So... The cool thing about the masterclass, you can study anywhere as long as you got an online connection, you're in. And uh, there's a lot of things to download as well that you can uh, work on when you're not uh, on the uh, internet. But the core trainings are, uh, are, are videos and you'll want to be connected for the best possible connection to that. And you know what? It's just a lot of fun to, to look at the stats of all the views that are in the private training area and just see what's going on with people and all the great questions that I receive as people are on the road. It's amazing. And uh, yeah, so you can just study this anywhere. And then of course, you um, get the most complete and highly reviewed training of its kind when it comes to this. There's really nobody else out there who is doing this kind of memory training. There's a few similar things here and there. But I don't, I don't think that they are in the empowering business as much as, as, as we are. So magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash go gets you in. And until we speak again, I really want to thank you for watching this video. I hope it helped you out. I know that a lot of people really are desperate 
to be able to learn a language and they know that these memory techniques have worked for others and they just don't know why that they're not working for them. Well, a huge part of the thing is is that they're just not diving in and using the techniques and they're not using them optimally. So uh, these tips are, are game changers. If you want to learn and use memory techniques, then absolutely go through this video again. R make notes and start using the techniques because it's going to make everything so much better for you and you're going to have an amazing time. And it's so much more fun when instead of sitting there with index cards or flashcards or space repetition software, you can spend two to five minutes on an individual word, create some crazy images, and then you're off to the races. So it's just, it's just amazing. So, and, and you know what? It's not for everyone. But if you find that that kind of learning is for you, then there are, there's no ceiling to what you can accomplish. So again, thank you for watching this. It's Anthony Metivier from MagneticMemoryMethod.com. If you want to join the masterclass, MagneticMemoryMethod.com forward slash go is the link to use, and you will get the whole package, including everything that you need to know about language learning and even some little bonus surprises as well that uh, are not part of the description that have to do with language learning. And I'll just leave it to you to let me know how much you enjoyed them once you found them inside.